Hi, my name's Keith Cooper and in this video I'm looking at the process I go through in making larger black and white prints. Now the printer I've got here is a somewhat huge Epson P7500. It's a really good printer. Um, I've got it loaded at the moment with a 16 inch roll of Epson Premium Luster just because it's a good paper for testing purposes. What I'm going to look at here is some of the process I do that I go through to make sure that my black and white prints have the tonality I want. Now I'm assuming that I've edited them okay, I've edited them on a calibrated screen. Uh, the laptop here is purely for printing, it's not what I would use for editing. But I'm going to look at some of the uses of the black and white test image that I've got freely available on an awful light images site. Now, this particular test image has a scale, grayscale on the top here, which I can measure using a spectrophotometer. Now, in case you haven't got a spectrophotometer, there are other versions of this uh, test image which work with all kinds of ways. I've got lots of articles describing how this process works. Now, I'm using the process here with the scanning spectrophotometer because it's very easy to do and it makes use of the kit. You can do this even with a uh, scanner, although you're limited by the uh, tonal accuracy of the scanner somewhat, but this is an experimental process. This is not a, uh, a rigid process, much like I would use for profiling by producing color prints, color profiles, ICC profiles, for example, which I have done and will do for lots more papers during the testing of this. This is all about getting black and white working right. Now, I've printed, as you can see, quite a few copies of the test image. Uh, there are six here. Well, actually, there were seven because I did a, bit of a few other versions, but six basic versions. And they cover the black and white print mode. That's the ABW for Epson here. Uh, Canon have a black and white print mode. This works for those as well. So I've printed the same image at lots of different settings. Now I've gone through the whole second, the quality settings from the basic quality setting right up to the absolute maximum with the black enhanced overcoat option. Uh, all the different versions of it and I've got them here. Now I then need to go through, once these are printed and dried, I then need to go through and actually make some measurements. And those measurements will enable me to produce if I want an ICC profile that I can use for correction purposes, although I don't generally use them, or more likely they give me the information that I need to apply to an adjustment curve before printing. The most common problem, and you'll see this in the graphs, I'll show this in a moment, is that print modes tend to crunch up shadows a little bit. So almost always, if I need this, and you don't need it with every paper, if I need it, it will just open up the shadows a little bit. But anyway, let's have a look at the actual data and what I was doing with it there. Right, here's the process I go through in uh, making the adjustment curves. Now you can see the prints here, um, rattled off a load of them at all the different settings. Notice the uh, convenient sort of window in front of the printer here. You can actually watch the prints as they're coming out. But anyway, I've made these. If you do this, do make sure you label them properly because the differences between them are not that great. Now, next, once they're dry, I'm going to run them through the ISIS spectrophotometer. Now, this scans that strip at the top and gives me a set of data that I can use for all kinds of printing. I can do, do all kinds of adjustments with it, but this is just a simple black and white scan. Now, I'm using uh, I1 Profiler here. You don't need to, uh, this is a measure reference chart uh, option. It's all covered in the articles, but you don't need a licensed copy uh, of I1 Profiler for this. This bit works uh, at uh, measuring a reference chart uh, even without the uh, license activation for it. So I've scanned that strip. Uh, you can see over on the side we've got uh, a f nice flat uh, curve at the bottom there. Uh, that's for the black bit. And I can see that I've got a uh, 2.6 or the Max, which is not bad um, for a paper like this. That certainly will give nice black looking prints. 
Now I save the data. I don't need all the data. All I need for the process I'm going to use here is the CMYK and the LAB numbers. Uh, I'll save that to some files. It'll save it in two different formats. Now, I'm not going to go into all of this in detail because I've got articles that go into details of different ways of doing this. Uh, I'll put links with the video and you can follow it through. And if you've got any questions, please do ask. But I say this is a bit complex stuff really to describe in the video. The key result of this is I end up with these curves. Now, ignore the lines, the almost vertical lines of A's and B's. What we're looking at are the L lines. Now, those are the brightness or luminosity of the print at different black levels. You can see with both of them, and these are set at quality one setting, uh, quality one and quality one plus the black optimizer setting. And you can see that the curves have a distinct kink at the bottom. And in fact, the black optimizer one is not very good at all. It's got a uh, long flat bit. Now, it's not really, really bad, I've seen far worse, but it's going to need some adjustment. This is at the level where I decide I will adjust. Now, the software I use, Quadtone Rip, for creating this from the data, that's all described in the articles. So you don't need to know all of this, um, certainly not if you're going to be using just a scanner to test things, but it creates profiles. Um, these profiles you can use, uh, once again covered in the articles. This is a graph looking at the profile and this is the correction curve that's needed to bring to linearize the output. You can see that kink at the bottom end there. Now all I really need to do for this is create a simple curve in Photoshop. Uh, this is the curve I've created. It's only got a few points on it. You can save this and then apply it uh, as needed. So that's set for that. Now that's with the curve not applied and that's with the curve applied. Mm, not a big difference. The whole point of these adjustments are they are small adjustments. If you need big adjustments, then it tells you something is wrong with your black and white print process. A look at the bullseye pattern. I'll just step back and then back again. And it's a very subtle difference. All we are, are we're, we're lightening up the deep shadows. We don't want to do much else. So that curve, as I say, it has five points, so you can see there, it's, but that's just to keep it as a straight line for most of the length of it. Uh, the key element here is the input of 95 is going to an output of 92. Um, have a look at, uh, say, look at the articles. I'll go into this. This is not meant to be a Photoshop tutorial. But anyway, there, that's the results of that. Does it work? Well, on the left is the curve from using a Q3, quality three setting. You can see a distinct kink. It's not too bad. That's what I've printed images with that that don't have important shadow detail. If you look at the curve on the right, you can see the line of L's is straightened out more. Whatever you do, don't keep trying to add more and more points to the curve to get some illusory perfect line of L's. The more adjustments you make, the more likely you can get issues coming in with banding and other stuff. I found that a simple adjustment like this is far easier. You can try using the ICC profile that's produced with Quad Tone Rip, but I don't bother with that much. Um, I'm looking for fairly minor adjustments and that's the adjustment I've got. But anyway, I've now got this curve, I'll save it, and it's time to apply it to a print. So, I've gone through all those measurements. Uh, you don't need to do all of this if you're just printing black and white images. It's something to experiment with and see if it improves your black and white printing. I've got an image here that I've opened up in Photoshop. Now, it's quite a dark image. It was taken in uh, Colorado, not far from Leadville, uh, one afternoon, uh, quite a stormy day. The image is about as big as I'd want to print it here. It's going to be on a 16 by 24 inch uh, sheet of paper. Uh, this, this was taken with a Canon 1DS. Now I'm going to look at images like this and how to sample them and print larger, but this will print just fine at this size. Now, 
I've owned up, there's some quite dark areas in the picture. Now, what I need to do is apply a curve. And here's the curve, uh, it's one I made earlier and saved. Um, so I've, it only has a few points in it and it just opens up the shadows. Now I'm going to print this uh, on a custom page size, 16 inch by 24 inch, which I've set up in advance. And all I really need to do, now I've set everything up, I've applied the curve and I'm just going to print. What I would say is that I do tend to save versions of files like this as is with the adjustments and everything. So if I need to reproduce this print, I can print it and I can use that curve or a different curve or no curve, depending on what the paper needs. But for this particular paper, I'm using this particular curve. So it just depends how you save your images. Now, anyway, all I need to do is just press print. Now, I've pressed print on this. I'm loaded up uh, Epson Premium Luster paper here. It's a roll, it's a 16 inch roll. Uh, 16 inch happens to be the size that Epson produces paper in and uh, comes in quite long rolls. So uh, there will be quite a lot of tests using this particular one. It's not a huge image, so it shouldn't take too long. Although, as I say, the laptop's not terribly fast. The whole idea behind this is that I get my print that I want to make, get the image looking right as a black and white image. I get that right on the monitor, on the display, color managed, I've profiled it, calibrated it. Then when I print it, I may need to make a slight adjustment just for the particular paper and printer I'm using. So if I was to print this image on an Epson P900 and uh, this paper would fit on an Epson P900, I would almost certainly need a different curve, or no curve at all. I can't remember how well Premium Luster prints on this. What I would say is that this is for making quite small differences. If when you do the adjustments, you see a huge difference in the curve you're applying, take that as a hint that the paper ink printer combination may not be a particularly good one. Not all papers work with all printers. Um, you have to be prepared to accept that. That's why I always say you choose your papers after you get your printer. You don't get your printer and go, oh, well, I've always used paper X, so paper X must be great. Hey, it looks rubbish on this printer, or not so good, therefore the printer's no good. No, you've got it wrong. When you do a big change in printer, there's always a chance that you're going to need to reevaluate your printing, which papers you use and the likes. So this is printing. Um, this is printing at high quality setting. Oh, sorry, at the maximum setting. So it's still quite fast. And uh, looks to be coming out OK. Looks to be. It's an image I know, so uh, I know what this should look like. I've got it set to auto cut on this, so I'm always wary about when it comes to the end of the print that it will just cut and drop off into the print catcher at the bottom here. Now the print catcher is a cloth sheet, which is fine. Well, it seems I did miss the print there since uh, somebody, as ever, somebody rang the doorbell. Well, there we have it. One nice dark looking print. It's meant to be dark. Um, it's got the tonality I want. It's got the structure in the deep shadows. Yeah, that seems to work okay. Well, there we have it. Um, one black and white print fine-tuned with a curve, give me a nice result. Now, if I was printing this to show it, I'd probably print it on a heavier paper. I'd look at something for a print. this particular image. I'd look for a brighter style paper, something a bit heavier, slightly different look to it. Maybe a warmer paper. I don't know. That's a choice you make. But there you have it. That's basic correction process that I go through in making black and white prints. It's applicable to lots of other printers. 
you don't need fancy kit to be able to do it, but make use of the test image. So I hope that's been of some use. I uh, hope it's used for people, useful for people for other printers as well. Please do subscribe to the channel if you found it interesting. And uh, thanks for watching.